everybody and welcome back. It's been a long month and I'm glad to be back. Last video I introduced the telephone system that we're kind of looking at. Well this week I'd like to show you what we've been doing. As you can see it's getting darker here in the northwest and actually the rains have returned. We'll have these until ooh, probably about May. So the introduction may change some because frankly standing out in the rain is no more fun but it causes for great modeling. So come on in and let's show you what we've got going on. Okay, well, let's give the dispatcher a call and get cleared here. Dispatcher's desk. Yeah, Mike, uh, this is train for, uh, 78. We're ready to head north out to Loveland. Okay. Alright, uh, let's see here. And uh, how many cars do you have? Uh huh. You know what track you on? Okay. Alright, so. Uh, Uh-huh. Okay. So here we go, Mike. Uh, you're going to take um, track two. CTC will give you a green light. You head out to the north junction. Once you get your green light there, track warrant number 112. Uh, it's going to be Longmont to train. You're going to go to Longmont and take uh, your train again, 78. Uh, the date is 15 October. 1959. Okay, at North Junction, you're going to proceed on this warrant to Longmount Siding Track, where you're going to hold for uh, train number uh, train number one. Uh, no, excuse me, train number five is going to pass you southbound. Okay, Mike, we're to head north. When we get the uh, green light from CTC, we'll head out to North Junction. Uh, we're uh, track warrant 112 to Longmount train number 78 15 October 1959 at Denver North Junction we will proceed north to the Longmount siding where we will hold for train 5 southbound um, to pass after the passing, we will call for a new track warrant. Dispatcher, MD. A copy is MD. Okay, we'll see you later. Bye. Okay, enough fun and games. Now, how do we make it work? Well, the easiest way to start this out is perhaps we'll start with just the phones. We need to discuss phones and time system and how they work. Let's deal with time frame. If you're modeling 1930s, late 30s to 1955, you're going to want one of these 302 phones. These phones were used during that time period, and to be fair, the phone company doesn't replace phones. Remember, they owned them. Ma Bell owned these phones, so they didn't replace them unless they needed to. This is holds true all the way until the breakup of Ma Bell. So, if you're doing those type time period there between 19, say late 30s to uh, 55, this is more than an acceptable phone. If you're doing a phone, if you're doing like I am in the 50s, this 500 series phone, which everybody recognizes as a kitchen phone. Put it up like this, okay, there you go, see? It's a kitchen phone. It's called a kitchen phone because that's what everybody called it. It's actually just a, 50, a 554 wall phone. Now these phones were used until as late as 1983 they were produced. That's when they were produced. They were probably used a little later. This particular phone here, I can tell you right now, it was built in 1971 because it says so. And it actually didn't even see service until 19, uh, 1974, which it says on the back of it. 
You, I've got another phone on the phone system, the same 554, that's actually dated 1983 when it came into production. So these phones were used that late. The other phone that you would use when you get into the 80s and start getting later is this phone. This is a simple 220 touchtone phone. Now these phones come in a couple different styles. When they first came out, there were a lot of the 500 series phones that actually came out. They used touchtone, but they used the ringer bells. This one in particular uses a buzzer. Now that's an important thing to understand. How a phone works is this way. It only takes nine volts to make this, the speaker and the microphone work and send the signal across the phone. But to get the phone to ring, it has to receive an AC charge of 90 volts at 20 cycles. Now that's not the same that comes out of your wall. Your wall is 110 at 50 cycles. So this is very unique. So to make one of these phones work in some of the modern era phone systems today, this ringer would have to be replaced with something that would take what we would use on a voice over IP type system or you'd have to have a way to generate that power. Now, let's take a look at how to get the phone to work in an inexpensive fashion. Say you want to build a phone system and you want four extensions and you don't want to spend a lot of money. Well, I got most of these phones here for between $15 to $40. On average, I spent about $25 a phone. So let's say I buy four phones. That's a hundred bucks. Well, what do I need to get these phones to work? Well, I need a power source. If I use that same voltage between 9 and 12 volts, up to as much as 48 volts, but quite frankly, you don't need it because you're not sending it very far across the, the, the room, 9 volts will work just fine. You need that 9 volt power source with the phone wired in parallel with a 300 ohm resistor in the midst of that. If you do that, literally any time two phones pick up, they can talk to one another. You're talking to whoever it is. But without the ring down voltage to ring the phone and without a method of dialing because a battery doesn't understand that, you need some way to communicate to another extension, hey, I want you to pick up the phone. Well, that can be solved really easily. You already have power there. So why don't you set up another set of wires and run a piezo buzzer or an LED that which you could push the momentary switch for that extension and voila, it lights it up. If you get a little more fancier, maybe take a rotary switch and then hit a uh, a momentary button and you can dial the extension you want, hit the, the momentary button and the PZO buzzer will go off. Voila, that works. They pick up the phone, you've got the phone picked up, you're talking to one another. So let's say four phones, all the battery, uh, the, the, the power source, the resistor, and some PZO buzzers and stuff like that. You're looking maybe a hundred 50 bucks at the most. I mean, that's really expensive. You sit and think about what it costs to buy a PZO buzzer and some momentary switches. I'm betting that you could probably put it together. And if you're shopped like I did where I got most of these phones for a fairly decent price, you can probably get yourself that whole system, maybe 125 bucks. Certainly manageable for most modelers. Now, what if you want to have the phone system work and you don't want to do that method. Well, okay, here comes another method. Last time I showed a video, I showed this PBX I got from China. I paid 90 bucks for this PBX. Now, it takes two lines to go in and it has eight analog lines it advertises. Well, let me explain how this works. It does have eight analog lines. If I were to plug in a line to it, it would transfer that ring down voltage to the analog line and your phone would ring. But in my application, I'm not attaching regular phone lines because I don't want to call outside of the, the, the train room. I want to call inside the train room. So from one extension to the other, it won't work because there's no ring down voltage coming through this system. There's no ring down coming down. 
but I could use a touch tone and oh by the way it doesn't understand dial up so I could use a touch tone phone and if I go to say sandman.com which is a telecom company I can buy a replacement piezo ringer to replace this bell system so I'd simply take this out remove the two wires tie in the two wires for the piezo buzzer when that says I get a ring voila it'll make a buzzer sound I pick up the phone and away you go so with a touch tone phone in that system you could get it to work 90 bucks plus 100 bucks you're talking 200 dollars by the way, those Piezo buzzers are 20 bucks to replace the bells. Don't get rid of those bells. They're pretty valuable. You can actually sell them on eBay. Probably pay for the dang Piezo buzzers you buy. The next thing you could do if you want to use dial-up, well, this comes from the old phone works. This is basically is a device that the 500 series could plug into just like so. Oop, got to get it in right. There you go. And then plug this into my PBX. And now, what happens when I dial, this little box interprets that pulse and turns around and sends a tone to the PBX. So if I replace the bells and put that device on there, I can now use the 500 series. It's going to give me a PZO buzzer and it's going to ring. I simply dial the extension and away it goes. Now, here's a little catch. These little devices are 40 bucks a piece. So if I have four phones, that's another 80 bucks. I'm now up to about 280 bucks to do that. But that's not really working for me either. I want a 1959 phone. So here's another option. Sandman also makes another interesting device. It's called the Party Line. It's a six party line. Now this is really originally what turned me on to Sandman.com. I went there to take a look at this. This is a, a uh, exchange office simulator. What that basically means in simple terms is it's a device that acts like the telephone company, but it isn't the telephone company. So what you have is you have six ports. You simply plug your phones into it and you can dial one extension to the other extension. The device provides the 90 volts, 20 cycle ring down that you need to make the bells work. This is really good, but that device is $400 plus four phones at hundred bucks. I'm now to $500 and a downside or maybe not a downside, depending on your situation, you can, it will only allow you to communicate from one phone to another phone. In other words, if extension 101 is calling 106, 103 tries to dial something, they're going to get a busy signal. The same of any of the extensions. So only two phones can talk at a time. Now, if you want to slow down your operations, that may not be the end of the world. But again, that's 500 bucks. And not really the best fix for me. Well, I happened to be researching on this and I came across another device that Mike Sands, or uh, that Sands.com had. And that's this device. This is, for a lack of terms, is a old PBX for analog style. It's not exactly true, but I'll explain why I say that. This is basically a phone system that allows you to hook up to eight extensions onto it. It provides ring down. You can have multiple phones talking at the same time. So it gives you everything you want from a telephone company. So if extension 104 wants to talk to 105, it doesn't affect extension 101 calling extension 100. So they both can talk to one another and away you go. Now, if you have a large layout, say you're a club layout and you need Oh, let's say more than eight extensions because this will give you eight. Let's say you need 14. Well, you can wire two of these together. So one port on each of the on each of these boxes will be dedicated to transferring calls between the two boxes. But then you'd have extension 101 to 10, uh, 100 to 107, uh, 106, and then the other one would have extensions 200 to 206. Hmm. And they can all talk to one another at the same time. 
Not a bad deal. Well, not at the same time, but between two phones. If one extension calls the other extension and the other extension is in use, you'll get a busy signal. So that's what I've got for you. This is really not that hard. Now this system I got for 350 bucks, plus my four phones would cost me, say, 450 bucks. But I've got total expansion capability. I can use any phone I want to. The other option is, let's say you are modeling a modern system. I haven't forgotten you guys. I know I'm modeling 1959, but if you're modeling, say, 1990 to today, you can also still get this to work. And even if you're modeling an old time period, you can still get this to work. This phone will work with voice over IP phones. Well, this is 90 bucks, and if you look on eBay, you can find voice over IP phones for about 35 bucks. So, you look at that, you're in the $300 range. So, there's a lot of different ways to use the phones in your model railroading, and it create that illusion that you're actually working on the railroad. Now, obviously, in the modern era, you'd still have radios, and I know a lot of guys are like, well, we can just use radios. But the problem with radios is the chatter and all the stuff that goes on is all there. Where you can see when you're dialing a phone, it's only one person talking to the other. And the phone rings are not that loud. You can control those, so you can dim those down if you want to. So that's my video for this week. I hope that's helpful. I hope you enjoyed what we showed you. And I hope you have a great time modeling. Happy modeling, and we'll see you in the next update.